ministers that are here, those who could make it today. I know it's been some times we've been having, and life has been giving us what it does, but we're going to give life back because Yahweh gave it to us. Is that all right? Today I've got some very interesting things for you to consider. And I'm going to give you a very common passage. Good to see all the beautiful faces again today. Joy to be with you all. Mr. Serene, the right reverend, the prelate, the magnificent, the bishop to be, bishop election, uh, <laughs> Dwayne, uh, Marcel, Consuelas, Conrabacase, Brooks. We bless the Lord for you today. To all of you who are with us in our technical spaces and our digital spaces, we are honored to have you. Uh, as well, and you'll just bear with us while we put together what's necessary and correct your models to be able to give you an understanding of where we are and the technology, and that should help. And Clubhouse, to those of you that are with us there, um, we are ready for you in just a moment. Uh, but it is a joy to be here with you all, and I'm sorry, I'm fresh with the word from on high for you. However, um, I did have to, you know, go through some very ungodly uh, traffic out there. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit weird. And sometimes I thought just Floridians didn't know how to drive in the rain. Something has happened to New Jerseyans. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. Um, but moderators, please bring our moderators up on the platform. We're so glad to have you. And it's a joy to be here with you all uh, in this time. Um, I want to make sure that we are clear on something that in spite of what you're going through, Elohim is completely 100% in charge. Is that all right? Um, please put my pastors up on the platform, and I hope that you guys can hear me well. If you cannot hear me well, please give me a back channel, and we will go from there. Uh, but I want everyone to put your attention to the book of Psalms, chapter number 91. And while we're doing that, I want to give honor to whom honor is due. All of you who are here, uh, we want to make sure that you get an opportunity to discuss this, because it's a serious matter. Uh, the life of a kingdom representative. Uh, that's going to be our subject matter for today. And um, I want to make sure that we get uh, the appropriateness on this to you. And it's going to be deep. Deeper. Deeper. Can we go deep? Deeper. Can we go deep today? Is that all right? I, I'm sorry to keep y'all held up. I know y'all are a little bit tired, but I think that if y'all give us just a few moments, we might be able to get some things done. Hey, Shalom, how are you? And so at this time, would you help me one more way? And that is to put um, your, your, your hands together at the end of this introduction and this acknowledgement and recognition for the uh, matriarch of this uh, great organization, Emmanuel's Hope International. Um, it's got as many names as the pastor that oversees here. Bishop Duane Marcel, Conredios Gonzalez, Brooks, um, but Emmanuel's hope. You okay, Doc? I'm not messing with you too much. I don't want your wife throwing stuff at me because she makes a mean go. <laughs> she introduced me to some fish last week that I don't think I'll ever forget. A Brinson, is that Brinson? Brinson. All right. Okay, I thought it was without the end, but okay. But to the great bishop here, the matriarch of this particular institution, we thank Yahweh for the Bishop Marion Brooks. Would you put your hands together for her today? Um, come on, really give Yahweh the praise for her. Uh, whether you like it or not, throughout all of the years, uh, Emmanuel's hope, and though you've been scattered and frattered and frayed and torn and COVID and and, and Corona and Delta and Omaria and all the other things you've had that kept y'all apart from your normal, normal way of coming together. Got everybody fearful that they're going to get something by saying hallelujah to your sister, your brother next to you, or suck it on the microphone that everybody else didn't suck it on. I'm sorry, I'm just going to keep it 100. I want y'all to know that, you know, if it were not for their efforts with the pioneers and founders and the unifying of uh, the founders of this great institution, uh, which came from many and became one. 
and she worked with all of them from husband then moving down to father uh, and then to father-in-law so she sort of kind of got the trifecta is that all right you all okay with that it represents the kingdom i don't care how you look at it clubhouse i hope you guys are hearing us okay um you need me to do what if anything I'm grateful. I hope that that helps. Is that better? Is, yeah, all right. I hope it's not too much tingy in your ears uh, for all of you that are there with us. We just got a few things to go over. We're going to hit y'all real quick with a word from my side. And so uh, with that being said, there was a, a great deal of uh, understanding and celebration. With Father's Day coming up, um, you want to look at something that is important. And that is that without patriarchal, watch this, and matriarchal involvement, you do not have community. Emmanuel's hope, I look over your history of the decades, uh, from the Brooks to the McIntyres, McIntosh, sorry, did I get them right, did I get the names right? Did I mess up? McIntosh and the Brooks, and uh, that's it. And the unification of that, you see the epitome of the kingdom of Elohim at hand. And sometimes we can take things for granted and not realize how far we came because you came in on a certain stage. Uh, but this was a long process and works. A lot of blood, a lot of tears, a lot of torn relationships inside and outside of blood family. Friends who, uh, you know, played saboteur, they had two brutes and all that goes along with that. So when you're still standing this many years later, I and my understanding relationship and ministry with other nations, other cities, others who come from different denominations, they think you should do things this way, they think you should do things that way, they think that you're not doing enough, they think that you're doing too much. All that goes along with that, you never ever pay attention to how much your leaders are dealing with and going through and keeping your fellowship coming forward. So with all due respect, as Father's Day is approaching, and I know the story quite well with Bishop and her father connecting with her husband's father and they merging, marrying ministries together to come here and in all of them who had been running the different ways that they did it, they merged with different ideologies with one purpose, and that was to bring glory to the Father. And you don't see that happening too often these days. And now in the latter parts of the year, am I giving y'all better history than y'all been hearing from your church? And when they come together, and then she and her husband led that major campaign did some beautiful reformation over in the Isles of Jamaica, both in Shutley and Devon and Hibernia and in Port C, uh, where Port C was added. And uh, in, uh, I got them, don't tell, I, I got them, thank you. Uh, in uh, 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 Yonder Pond and in Shutley, uh, utilizing the different pastors and leaders that are there in this organization as Father's Day approaches. You never have a good father without him first having a good mother. And it's the mother that keeps the thing together. Now, y'all had your day in May. Deal with it. But on Father's Day, I just want y'all to remember and understand that it took the fathers to come together. And it's hard to get hard-headed men to come together. And then once they're gone, to have someone keep it congealed and working well together. Emmanuel's hope, whether you are restored, Baptist, uh, same as whatever y'all are, all your different names you got, you are still one item, one entity, and you need to give Yahweh praise and give him praise for the leadership, president of Bishop Marion Brooks. One more time, bless you. Thank you. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 91, as we get started, um, I understand that because I, I've got some patriarchs that I'm missing this year. And I also have some, a mother that I celebrated on yesterday. Uh, oh, she is 
Isn't she lovely? Barbara June Jones Mosley, that's the reason I am today, along with my father and her, but uh, yesterday was her 75th birthday. 75 never looked so good on a woman in my life. Uh, and, um, you know, yeah. So I'm feeling so kind of nostalgic. I don't want to hold y'all up, but I promise y'all get a word for you. But just remember, always remember your patriarchs, always remember your matriarchs, and never take it for granted. Some of you already are. And the reason that many of us don't get the honor and respect from those beneath us is because we don't give the honor and respect to those who've gone before us. Y'all all right with that? Yes. All right, so I hope the clubhouse is okay and everyone else is able to hear and, and understand this. And those of you in clubhouse, please make sure you share this one today. Uh, we're gonna have a word for you. And um, those of you on Facebook, I'm hoping that you too will share the wealth of this information. Manuel's Hope International, BWJ International, DKM International, we are so glad to be with all of you. Psalms 91. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Upon high. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Upon high, the name of Yahweh. Our strong tower, the righteous running in. They are saved. A strong tower, righteous running in it. They are saved. Come on, everybody, say, Blessed be the name of Yahweh. 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 Oh, Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Oh, Psalms chapter 91. Let's look at what Yahweh our Elohim would have to say unto us in this wonderful, magnanimous, and rainy day. Psalms 91. Verse 1 says, he or she that dwelleth in the secret place of El Elyon shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge. He is my fortress, my Elohim. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and with his wings shalt thou trust his truth. I'm going to say that part right there. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. One last thing before you move on, since we're in this dynamic, epidemic, pandemic scenario. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Look at your neighbor and say, Yahweh's not giving me a spirit of fear. Come on. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies at day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, Rona's a trip. She's been talking. She's been. She's been walking these streets for some couple years now. In the dark, uh huh. She don't like the light. She can't stand the heat. Uh, but if you catch her on a cold day, you might not like the stay. So he says that nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Father, we thank you for the reading of your most dynamic word. We ask you now, Adonai, that you would allow for your spirit to take complete control. We digress, we decrease, 
that your spirit, your word, and your power would increase in this place. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we say and we pray, Amen. Your entitlement today is the life of a kingdom representative. Now, I, I want us to understand that everybody in the church is not in the kingdom. Uh, I want you to look at me because I don't want you to find yourself just listening to stuff in the background like you do nice elevator music. I want you to realize I'm talking directly to your soul, you know, because the eyes are the windows mm -hmm, to the soul. And so oftentimes we don't look at what we're talking about. We don't look at what's talking to us and we therefore miss conceive uh, what's been rendered. Is that all right? And so when I when I say this to you, everybody in your church is not in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Maybe you might like it better this way. Everybody in the church building is not in the body of Christ. Uh, I'm going to say it the way I like to say it because it seems a bit better since I know his actual name. It's everybody that gathers with you and sits with you on your pew is not in, watch this, the body of the Mashiach. And see, we got twisted over there in the book of Ephesians when the apostle Paul, who knew this better than all of us, would say that those that gather under the words of Elohim, they are his church. Uh, but he was talking because he was dealing with an upbringing where he himself, as a very astute theologian, uh, felt the necessity to clear it up with those that he would be teaching going forward. And he said that those who keep the will of Elohim, they are the sons of God. Help me, Ruach, because I got to get done quick. And so what he makes us understand is that everybody who gathers down at the tent Everybody who gathers down at the cathedral, everybody that gathers down at the amphitheater, everybody that gathers down at the synagogue, and in his case, everybody that gathers at the temple is not in the kingdom which the temple is representing. Mm -hmm. So I've got to be very careful and I've got to be very clear about this when I, when I discuss this with you because a representative of the kingdom of Elohim is one who is lockstep with the will of that which is the preeminent. How many of y'all know that we have to make Elohim preeminent before he can ever be important in your life? I, I think I want to make this clear. There was a great pastor by the name of Clarence Oliver uh, some years back in Orlando, Florida. And when I first got to Orlando, we made very good kindred. And he would teach this message so beautifully. And I just love the way he did it. Though I, I, you know, he just, I love the way he did it. So I had to give him credit for this. And he took us into the book of Psalms chapter number 23, you know, uh, uh, the Lord, yes, is mm -hmm, my mm -hmm, shepherd. And what he did was he made it clear to me, uh, Pastor Sarah and, 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 and Pastor Brooks and, 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 and Bishop Brooks and, and everybody here and all of you leaders all over the globe. He, he made it clear to me that marriage is an interesting concept that we've really misperceived. And so he said that until you made the statement that something is in your life, it never takes the position you may have the public thinking it's in. I'm going to take my time. And so when we begin to state that this is my God, in him will I trust. Uh, let me break it down so y'all can get this in commonplace because y'all say I'm too spiritual. So let me talk about your marriage. Uh -huh. uh, see, you don't realize that in truth, watch this closely. Help me, Ruach, get this out so I can get done and go home. He, he, he makes it clear. Uh, he said that uh, until no matter what the ceremony is, mm -hmm, no matter that you have a candidate for marriage called a male factor and you have a candidate for marriage called a, a female factor, female factor you, you you have a you have a groom and, and 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 you have a bride and no matter who sits officiating the service and the uh, commencement of this particular desired union within the community under the concepts and constructs of that which they themselves uh, have begun to nurture as a culture no matter what we look like we're doing mm -hmm, and when I or the efficient would say I pronounce you a husband and wife. It sort of kind of tells the public 
that this is what they want to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, until this person says, I do, mm -mm, and until this person says, I do, it doesn't matter what this person says. So until you say, this is my wife, she's never your wife. Until you say, this is my husband, he's never your husband, no matter what this ceremony presents. I've, I've, I've been very careful to make sure I don't marry folk who don't know what it means to say, I do. And they call me crazy and goofy, but I've only got one divorce on my record. Uh-huh. And, and, and that's through a lot of counseling because folk who really want to have maps. Did y'all know that some people, I'm talking about the life of a kingdom representative. I just want you to understand the backdrop. Does this make sense to you? Because I've married a lot of people, right? Uh, but I've also seen a lot of people that I counsel subsequently uh, who love marriage, but don't love who they married to. I did the wobble last night, so I've been practicing that. Listen, I want y'all to understand this. This is why I'll show y'all people can't be saved. See, let me help y'all with why I went there because I want to make sure we understand this thing. Can I wobble a little wobble with it, wobble with it, wobble? Listen, I want you to understand because some of y'all up here in this relationships wobbling because you never got solid on the fact that I'm not being okay with the concept of marriage, mm, the concept of joining an institution, mm, the concept of saying this is what our community does because many people are more in love with the organization, the institution, than they are with the person they're supposed to be committed to. I'm going to say it one more time. I don't think we caught this yet, Bishop Brooks. I, I know you understand that. Dwayne, you understand that. Pastor, I know you do. Uh, and Sister Ray. Uh, but people are more in love with being married. And the benefits of being married uh, than they are with who they're married to. Mm -hmm. Let me help you one more again because I got to bring this back home now. I got to leave y'all down here in those, uh, those thought patterns and bring y'all back to why we're in church. This is a church message. Uh, this, ain't the, this ain't the street message. And so there are so many people in love with going to church but have no idea what it means to love the God of the church. Should I go pray now? Oh, okay. So I want you to understand that the purpose of the kingdom super exceeds the imagery of our modern day church. Now I'm not coming for Christendom. I'm not coming for the construct, but I want your eyes to be open. The church at large within the construct of Catholic ordained Christianity is not necessarily the body of Messiah. See, the fact that you have to say in certain statements and conversations with people that, you know, the church of Christ got to learn, the church of Christ got to do better, the body of Christ got to do better, the body of Messiah got to be better. We got to raise up the body of Christ. No, you raise up into that level of life. It don't learn anything you learn by becoming a part of him. See, in him, that's the body, we live. I'm going to say it again. In him, that's the body, we live. Mm -hmm. In him, that's the body, we have our being. And just as you in the church where we talk about his body, don't mean you've ascended to that position in his body. So many people are perpetrating a fraud, walking around because they went in the building where the body is but never took on the lifestyle of the body himself but they dress like him they talk like him they shout like him they raise their hands like him but they don't know him I'm going to come for you in a minute 
And so what we need to realize is that a representative uh, is one who handles and produces and acts and gives a construct of his life in a certain way. Now, I want you to really get this in your souls, and I hope that you will take the time to just let this marinate, Minister Sheree. And, and, and I want you to understand what a kingdom representative is by just giving you a simple understanding of what a representative means. Now, I pulled this up from a very common place. A dictionary. So we can be educated. Because that's how we sound in academia when we don't realize that everything inside the church is not a part of the kingdom. And let me say it again because I think this might be something worth for real. Uh, see, I, I learned something and I want to give this definition to you from a thing called a dictionary. Mm -hmm. So we can be educated mm -hmm. because that's how we sound in the in halls of academia when we who are saved think that everybody who has sat in a pew, picked up a mic, played a keyboard, sang on the choir, preached a sermon, sat in the pews, ushered at the door, played on the drums, did everything for the finance committee. Everybody in the building is not in the kingdom. And so now as I, I, I want to give you this representation, just to, the idea. So I got it from the dictionary so you can go get it. Because people say, Apostle, I can't get all your theological uh, uh, information and books you study from. So could you just slow it down and make it plain for us here in the laity level? So y'all mind if I just lay it to you? You like that, Bishop? You caught that. She the only one that caught that. Nobody else went through seminary uh, to the level that she has. But Bishop with the 18 names over here, he did. Um, what is a representative? A representative, typically from uh, the Oxford definition of the dictionary, uh, he, he says it's, it, it's a typical of a class, a group, a body. Watch this, watch this, or an opinion. I'm going to say it again. I think that the mic might have muffled my voice. I'm going to say it one more time. Uh, a representative is someone who has to deal with uh, the, being typical of a class, being typical of a group, or a body of a particular opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, it is, uh, let's take a little further, uh, of a le legislative or deliberative assembly consisting of people chosen to act and speak on behalf of a wider group. Uh, we would say in another world, a microcosm of another element, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get done. Now, as a noun, a representative means a person chosen or appointed mm, to act uh -huh, or speak uh -huh, for another for others, I, I gotta take my time. So now it also means similarly, it is to be an example of a class of people or a group of people with a particular opinion or conviction. Now, one thing we got right inside the church, uh -huh, inside the synagogue, mm -hmm, inside the temple that Paul was a part of and Yeshua would visit and a part of the church on every block in every neighborhood you and I live on. I've never seen, uh, yes I have, I think we got too many churches uh, in a city on too many blocks. I think we got just as many churches on a block as we have dope dealers. I meant to say that the wrong way, uh, another way. Let me see, should I change it? No. So, as I said, we got more churches than we got dope dealers. We got more churches than we got strip clubs. We got more churches than we got bars. We got more churches than we have. And the bars control the block, the churches who are more than reside in. I'm talking about the lifestyle of a kingdom representative. So if in fact there are more churches on a block, then there are bars on that block 
prostitutes on that block, goat boys on that block, and other institutions of nefarious and perversion that Yahweh in the church says should not go on, why is it they rule the block? I just got, to, that's, I only got a few more minutes. And I'm gonna leave it be with you. But the one thing the church, I didn't say the kingdom, I didn't say the body of Messiah. Y'all like to say the body of Christ. Uh, I know how you like it. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna play chef today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the sources that you prefer, but I'm gonna bring it home to the truth of what it is. And so, even though you may deem it necessary to call it the body of Christ, do not call the body of Christ, i.e., the body of Mashiach, uh -huh, the church, because the church is where the body is resting. But every room in the building has not the body resting. Pastor Joanne, am I all right? Can I, can I continue? Uh, Pastor Contuela, can I continue? Uh, Pastor Brooks, can I continue? Thank you, sir. And so when we understand this, it gets really deep. The only thing the church has mastered, according to the definition of Oxford, is acting. I'm going to say it again. I don't think we caught it. This is what Oxford said. Uh, I'm just going to put it out here one more again for us to grasp. But he says, uh, it, 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 a representative should be something that is a typical presentation of a class of people. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as for a legislative or deliberative assembly, it should consist of people who are chosen to act. Mm, let, 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 me, let, me, let me try it one more again. Uh, for us to understand as a noun it is a person chosen or appointed to act the church got that down pat minister sir we've appointed a lot of people we've ordained a lot of people to act unfortunately like what they may not be the worst thing you can do is to have anything or anyone who is trying to do something that has been sanctioned by Elohim, I hope y'all get this, that has been sanctioned by Elohim to bring you into something different, but the whole time, Bishop, they were never true to it because they had a motive behind it. Therefore, they were acting like the temple. They were acting like the template. They were acting like the choice. They were acting like the truth, and they never intended to live that part out. And now you got folk acting like the body, acting like the kingdom, acting like what Messiah and his disciples after his ascension uh, were living like. We are, we are appointing people who don't even know their calling. And they're running around here prophesying, prophelying. They're around here pastoring, pasturing. They are around here evangelizing. I'm sorry, got it. We are, we are around here teaching what may not be necessary for what has to be done. And these things we must understand so that we have a better concept of the difference between the church and the kingdom. Now the message has not lost itself. The message is still where it lies. Only those who are in the kingdom, though they're in the church, really dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Y'all hear me? And have I bored you, put you to sleep yet? Have I, been, have I screamed at you? Um, am, I, am I hollering at you, though I'm passionate about the point? Are you getting the point of the teaching uh, before you think I'm just trying to get a, a good preach out? I, I want to make sure that if you are saying that you are part of the kingdom, then you should look like it in your style. Amen. Amen. You should be typical of what Messiah would do. Mm. Amen. I don't know if y'all really ready for me to get that deep, Bishop. I might. This might be the last time I come preach up here uh, with you all. Uh, I want to make sure y'all get this. I want y'all to make y'all get this. So you can't go around speaking Psalms ninety-one and not realizing 
who Psalms 91 is talking to. So you can't go claiming, watch this, you can't go claiming the benefits, listen, of Elohim's kingdom, but you're working for the enemy. You're going to have to help me because I don't know how long they're going to stay with me. You sure? All right. There was a thing called a traitor. There was a thing called a spy. There was a thing called a double agent. You cannot work for the United States in another nation as its diplomat and representative and expect the United States to fund you there uh, for its objectives, its liaisons, its ambassadorship, and take money from the place you've been relocated to. You sure? See, a double agent goes to jail. You sure? See, a two-timer. You sure? Will be divorced. You. Thank you. A double minded man is unstable in all of its ways. I like the part that came before it, but we should put it after it because Paul was really referencing this. He said, Let not that person think they shall receive anything from Yahweh. See, it's a thing to know what Yahweh does, has the ability, has the ideology to do for his agent. It's good to know what he has advertised. Tell your neighbor his promises are yea and amen. Can you tell your neighbor that? Come on, clubhouse, say it. Speak loud with that from your voice. Say his 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 promises are yea and amen. Come on, come on, Facebook. Type it in. His promises are yea and amen. His his promises are. Mm -hmm. And it's good to know what his promises are, but you must understand if you are not living solely, if you have not made him the preeminent, if you have not made it clear that he is your salvation, he is your God, he is your wings who you trust. In. He is where you get your sufficiency from. Then he can't supply for you if you double dipping over here with the enemy of his faith. Yeah. Now an agent and a representative of the kingdom receives what you heard about in Psalms 91. Now, I know some of you never expected to see this message go that way. You wanted me to come through the areas and the elements of the book of Leviticus and we talk about the Levitical tribe and the uh, posterior positions uh, of those things in the tabernacle. Uh, but no, I want you to realize it because you've been, watch this, many in the church who are not in the kingdom have been hoping to get these blessings, but they're never coming our way because we are not in him. We're not in your way. We are in our way. And that becomes a problem because being in our own way puts us in the way of Yahweh who wants to bless you his way. But you keep thinking you can do it your way. You must be as a representative typical of Messiah. And we dress like Messiah. And the way the church has told us Messiah looks, this little blonde hair, blue eye, baby Jesus, meek and lowly, 
Sounds good, humble, and holy. How we long to be like him. Don't keep longing. Y'all have to put on some Nikes and just do it because at the end of the day, if we're not doing it, we cannot ever expect Yahweh to pay out on our post of a representative if we are yet longing to be like him. That means you have not arrived. That means we don't get the benefits. And sometimes we're around here quoting and flipping scriptures and talking about what God has done and is doing in our lives. And sometimes, baby, y'all got to realize y'all not getting paid out of Yahweh's bank account all the time. I'm going to need a lot of help right here. Do you not remember when Yeshua was first baptized by Yochanan and the Baptist in the River Jordan? And Pastor Brooks, what happened was uh, when he went down in the water, he came up. The Bible says the heavens open. Uh, all of the blue sky you see in the beautiful voluptuous clouds you look at, they uh, parted so we can see the dark in the middle of the day. And a voice came down from heaven and said, this is my son. In whom I am well pleased. And then he said these words. He says, he said it very clearly. He says, follow him. That's what he told him to do. He said, follow him. That's what he told him to do. He said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Listen, hear ye who? Hear ye him. This is what we must understand. Now, when Messiah left that pool of water. He went up into a mountain led by the Ruach Kadesh for the purpose of being tempted. And when he gets there, only three of the temptations of his 40 day experience are put in the record. There were many more, but these three are deep. And of those three, one stands out to help this message. And he said to Messiah, who is the son of Elohim. He says, listen, I don't know who you are. If you be the son of God, uh, prove to me you're the son of God. Turn this rock into water. Turn this stone into bread. I said water. Turn this stone into bread. He then says in the same process, he says, if you be the son of Elohim, throw yourself down off this mountainside uh, and, and watch the angels. Because the Bible says that the angels will come and they will gather you up lest you cast your foot, dash your foot against the stone. So here's the problem we run into. This one that meant so much to me, Minister Sorrell. I like saying your name three different ways because right. I can do that. Me, you, you. Good. Saray, Sorrel, Sorrel. <laughs> so I want you to get this. He asks the Messiah one question. And he's asked each of you the same question. But the response of the Messiah is different than most of our answer. I promise you now, it was different than mine. First time it was asked, and quite frankly, the second time it was asked. If I be blatantly honest, since we on the pulpit and I can't, I want to preach and don't get struck by lightning. The third time he asked me, my answer was different than Messiah. You know what he said to Messiah, trying to figure out if he was Messiah, Bishop, brother, pastor, bishop, minister. Do y'all know what he said to Messiah? He said, "If you will bow down and worship me." I'll give you, look around. I took you to the highest steeple in the planet, in the, on the place. Look over wherever your eyes can see. He pulled the Avraham on the Messiah before he was born. He said, if you just look around and see everything, wherever your eyes can see. If you can see the topography of the land in one place, but see a star 80 miles behind it, wherever that star drops 80 miles behind it, that's yours too. He said, if you will just look out and look over, ain't that nice? Out? Ain't it good? You seen Herod, he tried to kill you. You got a chance to get back at him, put his whole family in jail. All you need to do, all you need to do, Yeshua, we're talking about bank accounts. All you need to do, Mr. Man, I don't know if you're the Messiah or not, is bow down and worship me. Come play on my team. 
and I'll give you everything you see. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I told y'all I'm going to keep it a bean. I'm going to keep it a hundred. I'm going to keep it a stack with y'all. I, my answer was not the same as Messiah's when I was presented with that. I'm not going to lie. I, I went for the money. I went for door number one. I did not go for I went. I went for the wrong door like a couple times. And I was saved because I didn't understand the presentations were coming from the enemy. And though I was in church hearing about the God of our faith, I still didn't know what it looked like for real, for real, to have a package look so much like Psalms 91 and then find out it wasn't. I'm talking about the life of a kingdom representative. So when he sells Messiah, he says, hey, if you will, in fact, just bow down and worship me, I give you everything you see. So here's my point to why I took that major detour some of you thought was un unprofessional. Let me give you a piece of information because I told y'all earlier that some of y'all ain't getting paid. You call them blessings. You think those blessings is coming out of God's bank account. <clears throat> They're coming out of your God's bank account. There is a God of this world. There is the God of the world. And see, many of us inside the church think that because we got a new car by hook or crook, lying on our applications, because we got money back on our taxes uh, by lying about our dependence, I'm talking to Christian people. I don't care who you are. That's not Yahweh's bank account. So how'd you get it? I asked you three times. Was this going to be okay? I'm not doubting you. I'm just asking because they're looking at me real weird right now. All right. See, we don't like to talk about because we got the blessing. We get the good of it. It feels good to get it. We even put our head and blink our eyes as to how we got it. And no, we ain't get it right. And come in church talking about, woo! Look what the Lord has done. Woo. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh. The question is again, which is why we must know how to call him. What Lord did it for you? Was it the Lord of the Rings? Was it the Lord of the Flies? Was it the Landlord? I'm just talking to y'all. I'm asking y'all. Was it was it the, was it the drug lord? Hey, 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 hey. But a kingdom representative will do what Messiah did, and I'm telling y'all right now, I did not do what Messiah did several times until I understood the church isn't the kingdom. The kingdom is what the church desires to be like. But the kingdom and the church, they are different. Same people, same people, but we different. Same people, but we different. Now when I say we different, don't mean I'm automatically in the kingdom, thinking I'm the kingdom and y'all not, y'all the church. I'm not saying that, because I don't. I could be on the church side sometimes rather than the kingdom side, depending on the choice I gotta make at the time I gotta make it. See, a kingdom representative will always do what Messiah did, no matter what's presented to him. I can say I didn't do that all the time. Anybody wanna join me? I didn't always do it. Whether I got suckered into the presentation, maybe I even looked at the presentation, knew it wasn't of God, and said, well, is everybody else doing it? Well, if everybody else doing it, I can do it too. Can I talk to real people trying to get to heaven? Anybody trying to get home to heaven? Anybody trying to get to glory? Any trying to, anybody trying to make it out of here? Because uh, you know, if you're in the wrong part of the kingdom in the church, heaven will not be your home. Amen. Amen. See, listen, let me make this clear. This is a revelation. I want all y'all to preach this when y'all get a chance. All you evangelists and pastors and leaders and ministers of the gospel, speakers, orators, and all these prayer partners, you prayer band people, and you dy and dynamic intercessors and all them things that don't exist in the Bible. But y'all go look, y'all go have it, y'all do what y'all want to do with it. Here's the catch I want you to understand. 
He brought you out of the mire and clay in the earth. He put your feet on a rock to stay in the earth. Once the rapture takes place, he's not pulling you out of the mire. If you didn't get out the mire, he didn't bring you out the clay. When the rapture takes place, that's where you will stay. And that is not a fun place to play. What were you talking about with your message, Mr. Postal Man? I thought you were talking about the, the ambassadors and the, the, the life, the life of a kingdom representative. I needed you to understand that there is a stark contrast, yet it seems to be an ambiguous line as to what that looks like. And the way that we've presented this in church has been so damning to many. Bishop, I'm sorry. Am I okay? Pastor Brooks, I'm sorry. Am I okay? All right. I, 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 I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry that we just ran with that. As long as I go to church, everything's gonna be all right. As long as I go to church. One glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a place where I'm sorry. If you stuck in the mire when that rapture takes place, you ain't flying nowhere. And the way we got to help you is to show you today that you have to become a real representative, a real type of Messiah. And what does that get you? Well, Mr. Apostle Man, tell them what they will receive if they shall accept the real position of an ambassador or a representative of the kingdom and not a representative of the church. Here's what you receive. Under his wings, you're gonna trust. Why is that important? Because the wings of the father, the wings of the high priest, the wings of the talib are your healing. In his wings is your healing. Watch this. His truth, his Torah, his words will be your shield and your buckler. Did y'all realize that Paul told y'all that in Ephesians chapter number five? I'm sorry, six. When he said, have on you, after all, have you done, having done all stand, having on the feet shod, the loin gird, the breastplate, the shield, the helmet, the sword of the spirit, all of them are his truth. They are your shield and your buckler. Let me move on so you can get what's behind door number one, the right door. Uh -huh. See, I chose doors two and three. Y'all make sure y'all choose door one. I'm going to let y'all go. We're done now. Watch. He says, he says, you won't have fear. Many of y'all work and operate in the spirit of fear. Yes, y'all do. I said y'all. Uh -huh. I said it because I talk to y'all all the time. And, and I just don't know what to do, Apostle. I need special prayer. If you're not in fear, pastors, let me give y'all a cue. Somebody's living in fear. When they call you and say, can I get special prayer? Special prayer. What? What? What is? Where did we? Where did we get that from? All right. They in fear. Rebuke the spirit of fear in simultaneously. I just educated y'all. Just rebuke this. I can you? I you know what, Pastor Bishop, right, Reverend, most magnificent Apostle Man. I'm gonna be traveling. Can I get special prayer for what? Why do you need special prayer if Yahweh Sabbath is with you? His angels are ministering spirits to them that are <gasps> heirs of salvation. Call his name. Say Yahweh Sabal. Say it again. That's the Lord of the heavenly host. And the heavenly host are spirits. They are ministering spirits to them that are heirs of salvation. Do you know they are with you right now? Mm -hmm, Bishop, I think. Bishop, Bishop, they don't know that. We got to come teach that. 
We're going to come teach that. Do y'all know that you got angels right now sitting with you? And the only thing they're waiting on you to do is recognize them, never worship them. Just recognize them. Do you know every morning I wake up, the first thing I say is hallelujah. To Yahweh be praised for me waking up. That means you got a plan for me. Oh, and this entourage, thank you for these angels. Listen, y'all can do whatever he said. I'm talking to walls and people think I'm crazy. If y'all videotape me when I woke up in the morning, y'all would think I have lost my complete mind. And I'm proud that I have because I'm looking at the angels like, I don't know where y'all at, but I know y'all somewhere around here. It's like too many of y'all to fill this room. So whatever he tells y'all to do for me today, I'm going to stay out your way. You just go right ahead and do what you need to do on this brother's behalf. Is that all right? Yahweh Tzabah. Hallelujah. Y'all think I'm crazy. That's a real conversation. Every morning. Y'all can talk to y'all angels. Y'all know that, right? Come on, y'all talk to yourself. I know y'all do. In the mirror, talk about, ain't I fine? Don't I look good? Talk to the angels. Say, hey. Do what you do. I'm at your way. Y'all not going to talk to me. So ain't nobody looked at their angel yet. Y'all just still sitting like, he, what's he talking about? See, what, what is he talking Somebody say, hey, do what you do. Just, 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 just turn and say, hey, do what you do. I know you see walls and brick and mother say, hey, do what you do. Y'all so deep. That's what a representative would do. That's what Paul did. That's what Peter did. How you think they got out of jail? Y'all, so, man, listen, so here's what happens next, and we're done, we're done here. I got to get off of this. My time has come nigh, and this is it. We're done, Pastor. But you won't have fear. You, you won't have to worry about. Now, I don't want y'all to go around and say this the wrong way. I am not telling y'all to go around and say, I no longer fear uh, viral infections and diseases. I, do, I, I don't fear infectious diseases. You are ignorant. And you are rude. And you are disrespectful of Elohim's grace. He gave you physicians for a reason. And the fact that you think you can't catch it is scary to me. Irresponsible by me. And I can't hang out with you. Two can't walk together except they be agreed. And you think you pleading the blood is going to keep you from catching a viral breathed in, sucked in, touched on disease that can actually put your lungs at arrest, almost like cardiac arrest for the lungs. You know what I mean? And you think that uh, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I can't catch that. Again, a kingdom representative knows that the only way I can be healed is if I happen to get sick. I'm going to leave that right there for the rest of the world to catch. Healing is the children bread. Yeah, dear heart, don't, don't, don't brag about that that way. It just means if you get sick, healing belongs to you. So I ain't got nothing to worry about. Dear heart, dear heart, brother, sister, listen, look here. You will sit in an ICU room hoping they have a ventilator. And if Yahweh should choose not to take your behind on the glory, you will suffer through until healing comes. Healing will come, though, because he told Yeshua that the angels will bear you up when you dash your foot against a stone. They won't keep you from dashing your foot. See, that's what a kingdom representative understands. Y'all better tell your angels, do what y'all do. Just do what y'all do. Just do, just do what y'all do. See, every representative in another land has agents that go along with them. So with that, you will not be dealing with verse six, the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A kingdom representative knows that any day I can leave this planet when Yahweh says so, but I cannot leave this planet until Yahweh says so. So if I happen to live through what seems to have the miracle gripped with fear right now, a mass shooting, guess what? If I am inflicted, if I am hurt, if I am, then Yahweh has me. If it's my time to go, hallelujah. I don't think we catch that because, see, church people say, oh, my God, they're shooting. Oh, my God, there's a problem. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
kingdom. See, that's what we do in church. But a kingdom-minded person is like, Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I'm here, didn't plan to be here, don't know what's really going on, you do. Um, I'm still going to help people no matter what. And if it's my time to go, to be absent from this body. Because I can't leave here. Somebody, I want everybody to say that. I can't leave here until he say so. See, a church representative, they run for the hills. A kingdom representative, they walk wherever they were trying to get to before the situation came in front of them. Now, Apostle, you just put people in harm's way. No, mm -mm, we're not. We're just telling you simply, stop with the fear. If it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Y'all know how we know that? It is appointed unto man. I, didn't, I don't think y'all caught that. I think we preached it wrong so long. It's appointed unto man once to die. Uh, let's slow it down. Uh, we're going to slow it down. It's appointment for every man once to die. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. It's an appointment that you had no idea you had. I'm going to say it again. I don't think you. Okay. There is an appointment for every man to leave this planet. Our problem is in the church world rather than the kingdom world, just like Messiah, Messiah knew he had to leave. It wasn't so much how he left. We in Christendom are caught up in how he left, which is why we call it the Passion Week. But at the end of the day, Messiah prophesied he needed to bear all he bore and leave that day. That way, church world, kingdom world, they different. Let me say it again. Church world says, oh my God, they died too soon. Oh my God, they're gone, they're moon. Oh my God, I want to see him again in glory. Oh my God. No. Messiah got on that cross with everything he had to go through and said, for this purpose have I come. When I die, I want to be able to sit there with a ventilator or without a ventilator or sitting on my desk or sitting at my office or sitting in my pillow, laying down on my bed, binging uh, VWJ Ministries teachings all week long. And when he takes me home, we can leave here quietly in the night. We don't have to be locked up in a hospital and ICU, CCU and everything else that's going on. But if that's the case and Yahweh takes me out of here, I want to be able to say, for this purpose have I come because I have an appointment with the time of expiration. Y'all start grabbing that idea and stop running from and trying to find every elixir that gives you the fountain of life. He is the fountain of life. And if you want to stay here in this body, you're not trying to find the fountain of life. Now, let me clear that up before somebody go ahead and try to do some crazy stuff. You will not, in fact, enjoy the life eternal that Yahweh's given you in this body. And if you try to extend your lifetime past the appointment he gave you in this body, then you're not trying to find that everlasting life. Live this life to its fullest. Live this life the way Yahweh gave it to you. When your appointment comes, when your appointment comes, when your appointment comes, stop tripping. The only way you're going to notice is live through it. You got to live through it. That's what a representative knows. Every time he sends a representative over into a new land, every time we send an ambassador out to a new nation, that ambassador knows there's a probability if things go left and they don't like us over here, they could trap you in that place. And that ambassador, that diplomat, that representative knows I signed up for this. Every time we send a military man across the seas, every time we put a military man on point to protect something, they know the day comes that there is a probability I'm going to have to die for what I'm here for. The problem with the life of what we call church folk today is we don't have a kingdom mindset. We want to be in church for the perks and the benefits, but we are not ready to die for it. This sounds good because y'all can go home and never got to see me again. But this message never leaves you. The life of a kingdom citizen, the life of a kingdom representative is that you must know why you're here. That's why you should know your calling. 
You should know that the church is not the body of Messiah. And you should know that it is appointed unto you when the time comes to go. Get yourself to a doctor. If you get sick, keep yourself from getting sick so you don't have to be healed. I don't think you gotta be sick. Do you gotta be sick? Do you wanna be vomiting out of both ends of your body? You don't have to go through that. Use wisdom. That ain't God, you ain't got faith. That is not faith. That's foolishness. Faith provides for your foolishness, fortunately. Last piece so we can go home. I promise you, I am yep, officially done. So here we find now that, listen, when you actually are a kingdom representative and you represent like Messiah, you will be able to literally have thousands who are against you fall. They will be born up, ready to rock and roll, destroy your integrity, your character, your name, everything about you. And Yahweh says it very simply, they'll fall at your side. And then their clonies, the other 10,000, they'll fall at your other side. Then he goes on to let you know what else you can receive of this. All of them that came against you, he said, they shall surely come. They shall surely come. Tell your neighbor, they're coming for you. Tell your neighbor, they're coming for you. They come, y'all didn't tell you. Y'all know I can see y'all, right? Tell your neighbor. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. We're supposed to be done. I'm not leaving until y'all say it to your neighbor. Y'all know I can see y'all, right? You know I'm looking right at y'all. Tell your neighbor, they are surely going to come for you. No, 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 no. Not surely, but they're going to surely come for you. Surely's not coming for you, but surely they're going to come for you. Watch this. Now tell them, now tell them, but not by Yahweh. So that tells you right now, the battle ain't yours. It's a fixed fight. You win. See the difference between representative? See, because when they come for you right now, you done went and got hidden in a bunker, got your gun out, got your bazooka out, got your sword out. Watch this. We got to go home. You can cue me up, my dear brother. He says now next, he says, and the next thing you have is understanding of this. Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. Because, because, because you have made Yahweh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Because you made Yahweh. The Lord is my shepherd. You have made Yahweh your refuge. Some of us have made the church our refuge. Some of us have made the pastor our refuge. Some of us have made the person we give our tithe to our refuge. Not understanding that that is just an actual turnstile, getting what you're supposed to give to him, to him in an accountable fashion. But we have been told and made to think that the man of God prays for me better than I can pray for myself. The woman of God prays for me better than I can pray for myself. And if they don't pray for me, it ain't gonna change. I gotta give to somebody. I need a prophet to give me a word. No, you don't. You got the word. It's your Bible, open it and read it and you will find that everything you need in your kingdom as a representative of this kingdom, you will walk like Messiah walked on the planet. This is where we need to be. So he says now, no evil will befall you because you made Yahweh your refuge. Angels shall take charge over you lest you dash your foot against a stone. Do y'all understand that? You will be able to tread on the lion and the adder. Under your feet will they be. You know why? Because in him, according to Ephesians chapters 1 and 2, you are in Messiah. And when you're in Messiah, you are above all principality and power. Everything that's beneath him, every name that is named in this world and the world that is to come is beneath him. Did he lie? I don't think he lied. I think he told the truth. I think we now understand that. Watch this next part so we can go home. He says this, he says, because you have set your love on me, therefore, because of that, I'm gonna deliver you. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on representatives of the kingdom, say hallelujah. He delivers me. I will set you on high because you've known Everybody shout Yahweh. Yahweh. Shout it again. Say Yahweh. Yahweh. You can call on me now because you know my name. Yahweh. 
Here's the part I like. See, there's a difference when a kingdom person and a church person prays. A church person prays and hopes. A kingdom person prays like Messiah prayed at Lazarus' tomb. And he said, the only reason I'm saying this out loud is for the benefit of them who are standing around. Because I know you already heard my prayer. When you know his name, he says, I'll answer you. He says, the only reason I'm going through all of this is because these folks standing here have never heard it based on the priests they've had demonstrated it. Because those priests was all out in the streets and, oh, God, oh, God, everybody touch hands. Everybody touch the wall. Everybody get on your knees and God will answer when we pray. And your shoe was like, nah, uh yeah, just the last one's come out that grave. Difference in kingdom and church. Difference. Prayer bands, and we thinking we need to pray for the nations. It's not your job to pray for the nations. It's your job to live as the light before all nations. You praying for this, that, or the other. Listen, healing is only the children's bread. That is something that we have not yet thoroughly understood. Because we do way too much based on what we've been told. Your job is pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And pray that who you are with demonstrates the life of this word as Messiah has left it for us to examine. I know I hurt feelings with that and all of you who are with me all over this globe. In the 1040 window and in and, and, and all the islands that we are part of and all the nations that we are with across this world, Zion, prayer is a posture of your heart where you are talking to Elohim. Every man has to give account for himself. The only thing you can pray for any nation is that they have a desire to know him. You can't pray for the blight to be lifted. You can't pray for the healing to be brought. You can't pray for the finances to be corrected. The only thing you and I can pray for for anybody on the planet is their salvation. Because the plan of salvation covers every prayer you got for him. We do way too much. Walking out of prayer, didn't have asthma, but how y'all praying in prayer? I mean, <laughs> you can't even breathe because of the way you pray. Okay. The last thing you're going to realize about Yahweh when you're a kingdom representative is he says that when you are in trouble, he's going to deliver you. And he's going to honor you. With long life shall you be satisfied. Here's the part that we must really understand and love. That's the only way you're going to have salvation. There is no other way to be saved than to be a representative of his kingdom. Your membership at your church does not count. Your membership in your ministry does not count. Your participation in the pastoral care team, building fund committee, Usher board and the official usher board, the mother board, your church participation does not give you, show you, or access you to his salvation. It is your acquiescing, it is your moving and pushing into kingdom mindset and mentality. You must become typical of what Messiah represented in the earth. Today, I always strive. And here's the problem. Sometimes I don't do it. To be typical of the kingdom of Elohim and an actual agent and representative of his kingdom. You know why I know the church don't really matter? <gasps> because I've been in so many of them. 
I joined this church, I joined that church, I joined that church, I joined this church. It wasn't until I joined the writ. Y'all get that when y'all go home. It wasn't until I joined his word that my world began to reflect the promises that are yea and amen. Now, I did not just sneak this any of the churches. But don't you get caught up in that web of churchiosity. If that place you are gathering is not teaching that word, you get out of there. Time is winding up. You don't have time to play games. You don't have time to be played and handled by people. If it ain't Yahweh's hand, don't let any hand touch you. Father, I thank you for allowing me to speak your words in truth. Many will and many don't receive it. Many will receive it. I ask you now that you, having such an important message, you convey the content and you put it in context. I've done the job you sent me here to do, helping us to understand the life of a kingdom representative. I pray that every church, every gathering, every organization, every institution, every ministry, every outreach makes their membership into your word, your Torah, that we might begin to do what Yeshua did in the earth solely and neatly. Therefore, we come before you and say we repent for any and all sins, getting caught up in the wrong things, viewing the wrong people, putting the wrong things in and on pedestals. We ask you now that you forgive us for how we have handled one another and dealt with each other and not done it according to the guidance of your writ as Messiah had demonstrated. I pray you now, we just want to be like Yeshua today. Help us, we pray you, as we all say to you, take our lives. We repent. We ask for the blood of Yeshua to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Yeshua, we believe in your finished work. We ask you now, by our admittance and by our surrender, that you would cleanse us and place us in the Father so that we can be what he has called and created us to be. And you have guided us through your life to become. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we believe Yahweh, you, you raise Yeshua from the dead. And he sits in your right hand right now, making intercession for us all. As we give your name, praise, glory, and honor. We all say, I mean, listen, if you believe that prayer, you are now born again, you are saved. I don't care what you were 20 minutes ago. I don't care what you were when you came in. I don't care what your title was. I don't care how long you've been in title. If you prayed that prayer, you are now saved. You are now a kingdom representative. It is easy to slip back into churchiosity. When you don't keep the word of the representation and the type of the opinion we are to be about. Your church mission, your church vision is not the word of Elohim. That's the opinion you are to be a part of. Today, Bishop Brooks, I've delivered what I've been told to give. And I hope that everyone here in this, both on Clubhouse, Facebook, IG, all over the countries that we service, that you would hear the fact that the time has come. You cannot be churchy anymore. You must, you must, you must know his word. That is the kingdom of Elohim. And before I depart, those first five books of your Bible are the unadulterated words of Elohim. The New Testament has five books also, and they demonstrate those first five books of the Bible. Read them, learn them, and let the rest of the Bible be a blessing to your lives. My name is Apostle B.W. Jones. Bishop is going to come, and we're going to let you guys go. I thank you all for your patience. Thank you, EHB. I, it's been a joy. I, I hope that we haven't overstayed our welcome and allowed ourselves not to be invited back again.
Clubhouse, I hope that your hearing wasn't difficult. We will work on the quality later. And those of you on Viewpoints, uh, IG and Facebook, and those of you in the actual archives, we want you to be able to know that this word is for you and you can grab it anytime. Pray that we are better at it than we were today. Now at this time, for those of you that are with us in DKM and the VWJ Ministries, go to vwjministries.com, go right now. Make sure that you prepare yourself to give your offering. Have you collected your offering here? So we're going to begin to receive our offering. Those of you who are at VWJ Ministries and DKM Ministries, those of you who are here at EHB, we're going to do this joint offering. You're going to collect your offering. If you are with VWJ Ministries, you know everything that we do is virtual. Go online to vwjministries.com. Our uh, team will be putting up those uh, ways that you can do that. It'll be pinned up at the top of Clubhouse. It'll be pinned in IG. It'll be pinned on Facebook. Uh, so you'll know where to go. Go to vwjministries.com. Some of you use your cell. Some of you use your cash app. I don't know all the apps you guys use. You know what to do. Get your tithing in. Listen, EHP all over this world. If you're over in Jamaica, if you're over in London, if you're right here in the US of A, you too. Get to EHP's sites, however you do it, you sell it, you cash app it, you mail it. I don't care if you air mail it. Make sure that you know that the tithe is a commandment of Elohim. Don't say you believe in the Ten Commandments and you don't keep the commandments of Yahweh or Elohim. So while we're collecting the offering here in this sanctuary, we want all of you right now to take the opportunity to go to VWJ Ministries, go to uh, all the areas that you know to go to and all the apps and get your tithing in. Some of you are still getting your offerings resolved and your vows continually and made. Uh, so remember to go and do that as well. The same stations will make sure that they uh, service you in that regard. Go get your tithing and go get your offering in. All right. And we're going to just move on from there. We don't belabor over money. We don't belabor over offering. We only belabor over you getting the word so you can be saved. Can somebody say I'm saved? Can somebody say I'm saved? All right. Now listen, I need you to go to that, get that done. We're going to take just a couple more seconds and make sure you can get that, get your offering in, and we're going to let you guys go right now. Again, thank you for allowing uh, the grace because of the delays that we had today. It was never our intention to keep you here this long. All right. On behalf of uh, Pastor Marcel Dwayne, Dwayne, is it Marcel Dwayne or Dwayne Marcel? Is, it, is what, what is it? Thank you. He's dignified about it too. I think he's tired of me messing with his name. It is Marcel Dwayne Brooks, the pastor of Emmanuel's Hope Montclair. And we're so glad to be with him. And then the overseeing element and the general overseer, Bishop Marion Brooks of Emmanuel's Hope International stateside and Jamaica. We bless Yahweh for their lives. Also on behalf of Apostle B.W. Jones, yours truly, BWJ Ministries, DKM Ministries, and all the affiliations that we have, we want to pray over your offering. Father, we ask you now that the offerings that have been received and are coming in right now, that you would grant the people who comply, whether it's from the Moedim or it's from this day's offering and service, we ask you to render them some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. We ask you that you would allow them to realize that this is your prosperity plan for them. You give seed to the sower, you give bread to the eater, and as they have sown, I know you're going to show them greatly in their lives how much that meant to you by what you do to them over these few days. I thank you for this in the mighty name of Yeshua and Messiah. We all say and pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Well, your offerings are done. That part's completed. Now we're going to segue right out of this place. We're going to give Yahweh praise for all the music, all the accompaniment, Minister Serene, as well as all of those who are here at EHB and their hospitality. And those of you on the platform that are hearing this broadcast, we want to pray this prayer over your lives. I want you to really put your palms to the ceiling. You can all stand all over this facility. The Bible says that Yahweh told Moshe that when you put my name upon my people, it becomes my will to empower them and bless them. So I want you now to do this in understanding. Put your palms out. Arms stretched as far as you can get them. As if you are ready to accept what Yahweh is going to pour out of the heavens that are up you now. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and grant you all 13 attributes of his shalom. Bring your arms back and say, I receive that. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. Shalom Aleichem to you all. Have a wonderful day.